Please consider supporting Black Women United YEG for the protection and advancement of black women and girls in Alberta. You can learn more about them at bwunited.ca. Uh, they are always looking for donations and volunteers. So please, again, support Black Women United YEG for the protection and advancement of black women and girls in Alberta. Again, that website is bwunited.ca. This is Dmitry Samarov from Chicago, Illinois. And I love listening to Vish Khanna's creative control because whether he's talking to a favorite musician or actor of mine or someone I've never heard of, it's as if he's introducing me to a new friend. And the way things are going, couldn't you use a new friend? Listen now. To make your flexible monthly donation to Creative Control, please visit patreon.com slash creative control today. Ariel Engel and Ephraim Manuel Manuk are musicians, songwriters, and good friends who each live in Montreal, Quebec. Engel is a member of Broken Social Scene and leads her own band called La Force, and Manuk co-founded both the band Godspeed You Black Emperor and the recording studio Hotel Tatango. He also tends to his own solo pursuits and has been involved in numerous other collaborations as well. In 2021, Engel and Manuk debuted a new two-piece band called All Hands Make Light, releasing a full-length cassette at the end of that summer and performing a rare live show at Pop Montreal that fall. On April 21st, 2023, Constellation Records released the band's stunning second album entitled Darling the Dawn, which prompted Ariel and Ephraim to return to this show to discuss things like gardening and life on tour these days, morning, noon, and nighttime sensations, bird songs, sleeplessness, and insomnia, bringing other musical collaborators into All Hands Make Light, labor, capitalism, and where the term poor eternals comes from, folklore and roses, live shows, new music, other future plans, and much more. A part of the Entertainment One Network with the support of listeners like you who follow and subscribe to this donor-driven podcast and spread the word about it and make flexible monthly donations at patreon.com slash creative control. Thank you so much for your financial support for all the work that I put into uh, making this show. With additional support from Blackbird Music, a wonderful uh, record store with bricks and mortar locations in Edmonton and Calgary, Alberta, and very friendly employees who will greet you warmly and ha happily help you find whatever it is you're looking for in the store. Hey, say you want to uh, check out the new All Hands Make Light album. Well, if they don't have it in stock when you're there in person, go to their website, blackbird.ca, and see if they can't ship it directly to you wherever you are in the world. Support record stores in your towns if you can, and also support independent record stores around the world like Blackbird Music. Again, learn more at blackbird.ca. Plus, in-kind support from Pizza Trocadero, The Bookshelf, and Planet Bean Coffee, respectively, in Guelph, Ontario, all fine independent businesses. And another one, uh, close to my sweet tooth, Granddad's Donuts in Hamilton, Ontario. This is episode 781 of Creative Control, featuring the lovely and talented Ariel Engel and Ephraim Manuk of All Hands Make Light, with your host, me, Vish Khanna.
Hi, Ariel. How are you? I'm well. How are you, Vish? I'm well. Thanks for asking. Uh, where in the world are you today? I'm in Montreal in my living room. Yes, the last time you were on the show, we established this is like your childhood home. Is that correct? Like the home you've had? Yeah. 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 That's where I grew up. Nice, where I'm growing nice. old. Yeah. <laughs> Where you continue to grow up is the way of putting it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you're never, never done growing up when you really think about it. Yeah. No, that's nice. How are things uh, going in Montreal these days for you uh, particularly? I'm thinking about the garden and uh, watching the rhubarb sprout. I don't know. It's, uh, it's a palimpsest, you know? Yeah. You know, as we're speaking, it's uh, early May. I just want to tell you real quick. It's been like 30 degrees every day this week in Edmonton. Oh, it seems hot. We've had doesn't rain. It? Yeah, it's yeah, very rain, hot. Yeah. What happens is we rain. we start the weather trends here, and they shift to your way in the next four or five days. So expect a bit of a, I think that's how it usually works. A heat Although, wave. Yeah, maybe it's been hot. It's hot right now. Anyway, so we're also got the garden on the mind. So that's nice. Is a garden? Is that an annual? You always worry about the garden every year. You got a garden. You work on it. That kind of thing. I mean, I, every year I neglect it and feel culpable. And it's something that came with the house. It's something my parents were really into, and I feel like it's my responsibility. Yeah. And every year it gets a little worse. <laughs> yeah. The gardeners are a dedicated group. My wife's a gardener, and she's on it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we compost. I, I, I spend I, my contribution is I crush eggshells, and I put them in a compost, and we wait for the compost thingy to thaw out, and then we put it all in there, and mulch yeah. and all that stuff so that's what i do and uh yeah and then i try to help with the other stuff but i need to get into it actually anyway it sounds like you're an aspiring gardener you're you're yeah a i think it's ma- it's maturational you know i think it, yeah. it's growing slowly in me people of our vintage who garden say it's the best it's the best yeah thing i, I do. never I regret it. it i always feel good after putting my yeah. hands in the earth yeah well it's lovely to see you again thanks for the uh, update on the yard and uh, I, 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 I asked for it. Ephraim, I see you there. How, how are you doing? I am good. How are you, Vish? I'm well. I'm very well. Thanks for asking. I assume you're in Montreal as well. Is that fair? I am in Montreal. And, and for you, how is Montreal going for you? It's okay. I just got back from tour, so I'm a little jet lagged and a little foggy. But other than that, I'm good. Still re acclimatizing, you know? Yes. Yes, of course. And waiting for spring to actually happen. Yeah. This was a yeah. Godspeed You Black Emperor tour? Yep. And and can you give us a little uh summary? How did it go per se? It went good. Yeah, it was it was it was smooth, it was good. Yeah. It's always interesting to go back to places you've been before and see how they've changed, you know? Yeah. So yeah, yeah it was it was it was good. I can count on at this point maybe two hands how many shows I've seen in the last three years. A Godspeed in Edmonton was one of them. Uh, mm-hmm. It was remarkable, and it was so nice of you to come by, if I may say. I know it's, uh, for some people, even a large city like Edmonton's a bit of a remote uh, outpost. So thank you, first of all. And uh, But that was a dodgy time, as I recall. That was like, right, that was a weirder, like, it, sorry. Has it improved emotionally, mentally at all, given, you know, uh, the years going by and all that kind of stuff? Because I felt like that one felt tense. And not just for you, you guys, but just like the mood. It was a weird night. Yeah, I mean, that whole stretch of the Canadian tour was very strange because they were lifting the mask mandates out west there, like pretty much right when we rolled across the border north. So there was a lot of, uh, we were still wearing masks every night just because we couldn't afford getting sick, you know. And also, you know, everyone still should have been masking at that point. But yeah, uh, yeah, it was a little, there were some weirdly tense moments because I think there were a lot of people who were like, fuck this, I'm never wearing a mask again. and. Yeah. I don't know. It's a strange times. And then, of course, like I got COVID three days after that or something like that. Oh, shit. I'm you sorry. Know? I didn't know no, that. No, it's okay. We, yeah. we all get COVID. You know, yeah. it's just a, it's a fact of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, yeah. I don't know. It's still it's still weird out there. I mean, yeah, it's still, still weird in the world. Has that tension, though, abated? Like, as most people don't even think about that stuff anymore, I think, is what I'm gathering. Like, so is there less of that tension, so to speak? Yeah, there is. I I mean, I th- you know, I think we it's I don't know, everyone's moved on. I don't know what that means, you know. Yeah. Um Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Huh. Ah, well, in any case, thanks for that update. Uh, gardening? Any gardening plans? Uh I have no gardening plans. No. I'll, although I do like 
planting things. But I'm more like, uh, I like planting things that I can just leave alone, you know? Perennials? Um, you have a nice garden. I like your garden. Yeah. Ephraim's yard has an amazing amount of birds in it all the time. Anytime we're on the phone, just like a, if you're in your yard. Yeah, we got sparrows and cardinals. The people who rented the apartment before us planted all the stuff in the back. Ah. Uh -huh. So, yeah. Wow, this is... You, Vish, I didn't know your new podcast was Garden Talk. It's mostly it's mostly about gardening and masking. Yeah, that's all it is. That's I should change the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, it's interesting that sparrows were invoked. Because uh, I was revisiting uh, the previous uh, All Hands Make Light uh, record. And that's around when we first spoke. And, and I thank you again for that time. I noticed uh, a sparrow's lift or sparrow's lift has uh, mm -hmm. re reappeared. Uh, and I... I, I wondered about that, among other things that I wonder about when I think about your band and this new record. And it, in fact, it ends the last release, this song, mm -hmm. begins the new one. I just want to talk, obviously, we're going to talk about how this band has uh, uh, evolved since we last spoke, I'm sure. But can we talk about that continuity, Ariel? Can you explain why this song has reemerged? Uh, I don't know if I know exactly why. I mean, I think um, I can, I'm just I'm making it up now trust me i, I am I too that... i'm riffing this is all <laughs> gardening masking and Everyone birds might have an answer a real <laughs> answer but i think it's a nice way to start a record about the dawn yeah because you know i mean i know that this morning i was at dawn i was aware of bird sounds mm. so I think it, it's just, it felt like a really natural opener to the theme of the record. Right. And, but it's also something, like I say, of a revisitation of your previous record. Yeah. So, so yeah. some of, the, yeah, we didn't, we, there's a couple songs that we put on this record that we had on the cassette. Yeah. yeah I guess because <laughs> the cassette wasn't, it was a, it was a, like a limited run. And although it exists on Bandcamp, uh, we felt like it should have, some of those songs needed to have a, Physical embodiment. Yeah, so Lie Down in the Sorry. Roses ends the new record, uh, and it appeared first on the last record. I'm just giving people a mm -hmm. brief chronology, because I find this... Ephraim, as you know, I like uh, trying to figure things out. Um, and then A Sparrow's Lift, as I said, ends the last record and begins this one. Ephraim, it sounds like you might have some insight about the sequencing and revisitation here. Can you speak to these things? Yeah, I mean, it's it's super, it's not that interesting. It, uh, yeah, like Ariel said, it was, you know, we made this little cassette and put it on Bandcamp. And then when we were starting to flush out what this record was going to be about, we realized that coincidentally that the uh, Sparrow's Lift song is about not being able to sleep. So given that the whole record, I mean, it's about more than that. That's uh, That's like a gross oversimplification but uh yeah so that it made it made sense to start this record that was about the dawn with this pretty little song about not being able to sleep mm. and then yeah for for anchor and roses those were two songs that i we reworked those for this record because it's they on the cassette they weren't totally where they needed to be yeah so yeah that's that's the story I, I appreciate you saying it's not interesting, but I I don't know. I can't help but think it is. So maybe I'm not interested. You know, it's, it's entirely feasible <laughs> that I'm not an interesting person. I, I've I, I've come to terms with that, but I don't know. I find that fascinating. I mean, of all the songs yeah. that you could have revisited, you felt thematically these made sense. Is that what you're getting? Absolutely. At? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So let's get at those themes a little bit. Um, and I don't know who can speak to this because I don't know where it emanates from. The sleeplessness you describe is this something you? Have both shared? Uh, yeah, is that, yeah, yeah. I think I think I think we we share we share that. I think. I mean, now we can extend this podcast into <laughs> gardening and parenting. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just that. I th I think that. Yeah, I think sleeplessness is a is a theme. It's, it's definitely a theme of mid and later life. Yeah, well, absolutely. Partly, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not just kids. It's also just a different relationship to to time your consciousness changes your i don't know i don't know if you put your i don't know if you could put your head down and sleep the same way as you did that you did when you were a child or a teenager with the same kind of abandon uh i think our relationship to even knowing about sleep changes as we get older i mean i i grew up yeah. i never slept i i was an i'm a night owl i would watch 
late night TV. I would oh. I would stay up all night and then I'd sleep through the day unless my dad was like, go mow the lawn or vacuum. If, as long as I was pushing a device, my dad was pleased. That was my chore. Go <laughs> go push something around and 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 wake up. You can't be sleeping. But I loved. Uh, right. I, but but as you get older. Uh, and you read about, I don't know about you guys, but you read about like, how, how well, what would be good for my health? Sleep. Sleep's yeah. very important, apparently. <laughs> and they tell you, I've, I, yeah. I only noticed it when uh, I had children, when I was sleeping less and not feeling great. Yeah. And then you'd be like, oh, they're like, yes, just sleep. Can't you just. But you're also, you're teaching children to sleep. Yes, exactly. So you become incredibly aware of it. it makes no sense. Yeah. Anyway, I, I appreciate that from your perspective, Ariel. Uh, Ephraim, do you want to speak to that? Is there anything more profound you can say about what we've been discussing in terms of sleeplessness? No, I mean, uh, no, you know, I mean, I agree with what you both said. There's also, I mean, I think, yeah, there is a difference between staying up all night, you know. And uh, insomnia, you know? So, right. yeah, I don't know. I would make that distinction. Just in terms of the themes of the record, you know? Not to be overly pedantic, you know? There are some some moments in life where you're up all night, you know, and it's not even a... Not because you can't sleep, but because the circumstances of life have prescribed it, you know? Well, I couldn't help but pick up on um, some themes here around the notion of sleep, but about dreams, and the dream state, if you will. And uh, I wonder, like Ephraim, this, uh, and I want to get to this because Ephraim, your voice is more prominent on this record. Uh, I believe, I don't even, I don't want to uh, generalize because maybe it was in there. Some Was your voice on the previous release at all? No. Not even a little bit treated? Okay, just wanted to make sure. I, no. And so not only is your uh, voice back, uh, you've uh, contributed lyrics and Ephraim, I just yep. want to say, as a fan of yours, I think for some people you are known as an instrumentalist or what have you, but for those of us who follow all of your stuff, we know you sing and you write songs. It's just nice to hear this again uh, after some time. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. I I Sweet. enjoy reading the, the words off the page as well. What I was getting at there is, uh, yeah, there's a song here called uh, Waiting for the Light to Quit, which I believe has been ascribed to Ephraim. I dreamed a dream I could hardly see. So it's basically a nightmare of some kind. I've, I've recited two lines, but I also, it's, it, to me, it's not, oh, I had a good dream. It's like the dream, weird insomnia dream state, like the few, I don't know how to describe it. Is that where you're kind of coming from a little bit more? Or is it literally like, I actually finally fucking fell asleep and I had the weirdest fucking dream? Uh, yeah, no, it's more, I mean, that song's really about the feeling of, being up all night doing drugs and trying to find your way home, you know, ah. but it's written from someone else's viewpoint, but it's also, I don't know, it's based on personal experience too, of course. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that's what that song's about, you know, like that endless trudge home. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's what that song's about. Okay. So it's, so it's a, it's a waking dream, I guess. Is that, is that the expression? I don't know if I... Well, I don't know what to call – again, I don't know what to call that thing when you're like – when you're hiking halfway across a city to try to find somewhere to sleep, you know, and you need to sleep. You're dead on your feet and the drugs are wearing off and uh, yeah, I don't know. That's between – that's between – sleep and wakefulness you know that's like that's a that's its own particular type of purgatory you know in, like in a, high school it's a liminal a liminal space liminal liminal space yeah in high school i used to work midnight shifts at a gas station uh yeah that was weird because you're Friday, in the song <laughs> then you're in the song I'm in the song. Yeah, you're the yeah. you're the kid behind the couch. Yeah. He doesn't have any change. And, that's exactly and who no I was. Telephone to ring. Yeah, that's yeah. You. That's exactly who I was. But that Friday, I would go to high school and then fake sleep to get my. I'd like okay, I'm going to bed at 5 p.m. and I wouldn't. I just lie there because I hadn't had a normal yeah. sleep. And then I'd go the Friday night, Saturday morning, hell on earth. But then the next day I was fine. And then I had to go to school on Monday. So I'm just like, yeah. I related to this exactly because you have, mm -hmm. I'm sure driving, touring. Uh, sorry. Have either of you worked a solid midnight shift, like at a, some sort of job? I, beyond I touring? did. I did work the, what I called the graveyard shift. Uh, it's kind of a bad joke, terrible joke. Actually, when I finished my story, I worked the graveyard shift listening into suicide hotlines. Oh my God. 
Sorry, I, I said terrible. It's off. It's terrible. No, talk. no. I mean, that's <laughs> that's not. Uh, I yikes. shouldn't call okay. it the graveyard shift. Just underline that a few more times. But we were. I used to listen in. Um, I was like a silent monitor for. There's a big research project on the, on like how well certain suicide hotlines were doing their job in the southern U.S. And we were like, we were listening in and noting you know, what we heard. Listening in. That's interesting. Yeah. You know, when they say your call may be monitored. Hello. By, wow. That was your job. That's really, huh. That was and my job. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, in the, uh, under the guise of suicide prevention huh. research. That is really fucking heavy. I'm sorry. Because you've got um, the no. altered state of being awake, which is what I was getting at with the actual yeah, you're heavy. In a you're in a windowless room in a university. Like the, it's kind of, it's, you're already out of time. And then mm. you're eavesdropping on people in crisis who are most of the time being given pretty bad counsel. Yeah. Sometimes like incredibly inappropriate counsel and you also can't say anything because they can't hear you even if you wanted to say something it's a it's a pretty kind of it was a, yeah it could, it, it could be acutely uh uncomfortable and painful w would you say that particular experiences or experiences like that have informed any of your songwriting either here or in the past area ariel have you addressed that no i've never addressed it but i there's there's a lot of suicide in, on my father's side of the family, so it's like yeah. uh, it's in it's in my consciousness. But uh, yeah. I think that maybe that's why I let myself make those kinds of bad jokes. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the the thing about this record, and from what I can pick up hearing you both sing, and from what I've read of the lyrics, is that there is hope in this. I just want to I want to qualify that yeah. for the people listening. Like this is get this is heavy stuff, but it's uh, I think it's it's hopeful. Uh, before we move on to much further um Ephraim beyond like I say all night touring drives have you had that experience of beyond insomnia have you had the experience of actually working uh in the middle of the night no I I used to wish I could get a a fucking overnight shift you know but uh no the truth is you know like from the age of 17 until I don't know until it was 25 that me and Moro bought a van and started, bought a beat up van and started being furniture movers. But yeah. before that, I was chronically unemployable and chronically unemployed. You right. know, it was, I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't get a fucking job to save my life, you yeah. know? Yeah. And I tried, but, uh, yeah. Okay. Dark times. Yeah. Well, uh, I appreciate that. Um, Ariel, I'm going to go back to you on this before we go to Ephraim in terms of this, uh, choice, this, this shift yeah. in terms of having, um, his voice and 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 his uh, lyricism uh, present mm -hmm. on uh, all on, on all hands make light record. Um, did you have a discussion about this? How did this sort of come about? Mm, I would have more. I would have more of it. <laughs> I love it. I don't know. It <laughs> I, just as I recall, just as I recall uh, from the previous conversation, the kind of division of labor was. Maybe this is not. Please correct me if I'm wrong, Ariel. Uh, Ephraim would kind of come up with a lot of the, the soundtracks, if you will, the music, uh, yeah. and then you would yeah. contribute vocals and, and lyrics. Is that about right? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I contributed, I think this time I, yeah, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know how much I did. No, I, 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 I sing and, uh, but most of the music is, the, is from Ephraim. And then we, we did get together in the studio and I put in I put in my opinion and stuff, but I it's I'm not coming with with like whole pieces the way that Ephraim is. And so that was the case the previous time. Did anything shift for for your role in this on this recording? And the last time I think there was a, there was a couple things that I had brought in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'll shift. I, I just it's it's just felt it's felt I don't know it's felt good for me but i mean maybe i'm maybe because but i i've enjoyed it yeah i've enjoyed this process yeah yeah i'll shift it back to ephraim then ephraim can you talk about uh, what compelled you to bring your voice and your words to th this record well uh, ariel was super enc encouraging about me singing um so that helped a lot you know and then yeah sometimes 
you know, I don't know. It's it's hard. It can be difficult writing words for other people to sing, just in terms of cadence. And um, yeah, I don't know. It was the process. The process for this one was interesting because it sort of felt like uh, making a like a bespoke suit or a bespoke dress or something. You know, like there was a lot of back and forth about the sort of raw material that we were making. Um, and it all happened very quickly, right, Ariel? Like, it was a very yes. super fast process, yeah. weirdly. But once the, like, you know, once the rough pieces were in place, it it was able to go kind of quickly. But there was a lot of, like, like the second song on the record went through a bunch of different iterations before it became what it is on the record, you know? The first song, the second song on the record, Darling the Dawn, like started just as this long sort of pipe organing, like what, what's in the back of the track there was what the track was. And we just sort of, you know, hung garlands all around it in different ways over and over and over again until the final form sort of revealed itself. And then Ariel came up with that crazy hook at the end of the song. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of it was just kind of like that, you know? The song you reference, the album is called uh, Darling the Dawn, but I believe the song you're referencing is called We Live on a Fucking Planet and Baby, That's the Sun. Yeah, yes, which, is, which is the line at the, the, the <laughs> repeating line at the end of the song. I can't help but ask, not because I have a, a penchant for loving cussing, but that's, <laughs> a, that's an evocative title. Uh, Ephraim, where did that title kind of, I, I understand it's a lyric in the song, but is that an Ariel? Ariel, why, why is it called, it's an Ar why is that called that? It's a, a memory. It's a thing that happened. I, I woke up at dawn and I sat upright and I, you know, when you like come to, you, you wake up and you're already seated. I don't know if that's ever happened to you, but. When you, and you I wake was up and you're already to, seated. Is that what you said? Like you're already I was, upright? I woke up, like I woke up and I was already sitting up. Like I woke up in the process of sitting up and for some reason it was the, it was the dawn and I was lying next to my boyfriend at the time. And I said, we live on a fucking planet and baby, that's the sun. And I remember just a feeling how both like the combination of like a, a wonder that we live on the sphere and that we, you know, this, the, the strangeness of living on a planet and also that we're greeted by the sun hmm. every morning. I think there was something about being in that, I guess, again, that liminal state between sleep and consciousness where the strangeness of existence is best exposed. Huh. Sorry, I, I, I appreciate what you're saying about the 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 in between state, the kind of almost the the I don't even know what that is. It's not dusk. What is that state called before the dawn? Actually, is there a name for that? We call. It, I know what dusk is. I'm not smart. Is there a name for that period where the dawn is just about Ooh. to break? I don't know. Uh. In French, it's lobe, I think. Oh, Aube. I like that. That's but, good. I just, what I'm getting at, though, is do you think that's an extension of a dream that you would be upright and saying that? I know I've had, no, I've had existential angst, you know, like many people, but pretty profoundly to the extent that for many years I couldn't look at a night sky because I couldn't fathom eternity or, you know, I couldn't, it just, you know, I don't know what I thought. I don't know what I think we should live in, but, you know, a flat earth makes more sense to me. Huh. Obviously, I don't. I'm not a flat earther, but there's something about living on a ball, and of course, you know, it can be explained to me scientifically, but it, it's it's still it, it, it's aesthetically wild, yeah, to me. And so then the idea that I'm on a ball, and then there's this ball, this gigantic ball that's coming up and illuminating the day, creating the day, or giving us a sense of day. It's fucking trippy. That is trippy, man. I didn't. And I mean, like, how do we ever get over that? I don't know. Huh. Ephraim, do you have a unique relationship with the night compared to the day? Like, do you, I know they're different. Sorry, that's a really dumb question, maybe, but everyone, I kind of accept it, I guess. Oh, yeah, it's, I've accepted it. But do you, and I don't know with all the mention and references to light and the dawn and birds singing, which by the way, I, re I read this a few years ago. I, I, birds sing because the oxygen levels change. Did you guys know that? No. What do you mean the oxygen level changes? I'm not smart enough to explain this, but I when my uh, I don't want to go too dark here. But when my mother was uh, sick with cancer, I read a book about. Uh, it's called. I'll cite the book because it helped me anyway. It was called Radical Remission, and it was a sociologist wanted to figure out why uh, in the list 
of people who recovered from cancer, they discovered uh, there were all these designations of radical remission. And no one would explain it. They just wrote radical remission because they didn't know. But when she did the sociological, sociological research, she realized all of these people made some major lifestyle change. Huge. Whether it was diet, uh, mood, people would like just immerse themselves in comedy and their terminal cancer would disappear. I know it sounds like weirdness, but it's a sociological study and the doctors couldn't explain it. So people, it's often a, a combination of fact. People go vegan. They, 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 they just mm -hmm. stop working. They reduce stress and somehow radical remission. Anyway, in one of the chapters about uh, some case study, they just talked about this person trying to shift their, we talk about sleep habits, shift their sleep habits and they started to sleep better and they were up with the birds. And for some reason, the, the author went in about how the reason birds sing is because they're sucking in as the oxygen level changes as the dawn breaks. Again, someone who knows shit from popular science, please it, correct me right. here. It must go up, it's, right? You it goes up. Go so up. they sing to uh -huh. to consume that oxygen. It's the sweeter air, and it, it, it enriches them, uh -huh. and that's why the birds sing in the morning. I'm really – someone's going to be mad at me because I'm probably fucking this up. But Ephraim, that's in it. I think that's it in a nutshell from memory. Uh, you didn't know – I gather you've not heard this before. Have you ever – No, I, I have – I, I haven't heard that before. The oxygen thing. No. <laughs> I think we probably assume, oh, the birds just woke up and they're chatty. Or they're, they're all like, worms, worms, worms. I always thought that because the, the, the birds at night, it feels like they're announcing where they are as dusk settles. They're like, hey, we're in this tree because there are still stragglers right. coming, you know. Um, and then I always thought that the dawn chirping was a variation of that, you know, like, hey, we're here. Anyways, yeah, that's interesting. It could be that, <laughs> but it, it is something to do with the air literally changing. And where I was coming from with that is, oh, yeah, that's what I was asking you about, Ephraim. Sorry for the tangent. Uh, the that's all good. Rudimentary scientific uh, tangent. If I can find some evidence, I'll send you guys links. Anyway, my point was going to be, uh, yes, beyond the mood and the change, uh, uh, Ariel describes a profound existential angst about the nighttime sky on some level and what it means. Do you have anything like that, Ephraim? No, I mean, sure. Like if you're in the country and you can actually see, you know, stars and things. I, to me, you know, I've had more experience with nighttime in the city, you know? Yeah. And again, and like, you know, when I was younger, between when the bars close and when people start putting on their suits to go to work in the morning, it's a very crazy time if you're out and about in the city, which again goes back to that uh, waiting for the light to quit song, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and there's a quality of light there as well because there aren't many cars on the street, although there are some cars. Um, and you notice the artificial light a lot more. And then there are the variant qualities of night sky, even in the city depending on what season it is or what's going on uh, in terms of the weather. There are like so many different color night skies. There's purple ones, there's, you know, green ones, there's blue ones. There's sometimes like white skies at night, you know? I mean, I feel like, yeah, I don't know. I don't have a very, mm. I have a simple relationship with the night, although it's changed now, you know, because I don't, I'm not often out and about at that time anymore but yeah i don't know i always found some reassurance even in when i was getting myself into heavy situations in those hours i always felt something kind of reassuring about the the way things looked and felt especially in summertime yeah. you know appreciate that um in both of your encounters i assume if you suffer from insomnia like i have i would assume you read up on or or try to do some research on how to cure it is that a fair assessment mm -hmm. have you both done that sort of looked into how to know yeah, Ephraim from shaking his yeah, head absolutely never you just sort of uh, ariel you have well i mean i yeah <laughs> i'm just wondering because i was going to say i find it curious that if you have insomnia and ariel maybe back me up because you've done some of this reading or whatever mm -hmm. they often tell you to just do stuff you would do in the daytime which is yeah, they tell you to get out of bed and don't, yeah, just don't, don't put pressure on your, on this, but I don't do it. Yeah, you just get up. It's a bit weird because it's, it's you often ignore like, the it. fact that you wish you're crying from a desire to sleep. <laughs> but it's also like, ignore the time of day it is. 
The subtext of yeah, me but is, we haven't always slept. We haven't always not. We haven't always slept in in the way that we do, right? I mean, I mean people yeah. used to get up for an hour in the middle of the night or two hours and like have a meal, and you know, sometimes it's about. I think it's important to you know just see that the way we sleep has also to do with like a kind of obsession with like um, productivity. Yeah, and, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah, and commerce, and so that you know. D- Sometimes we just have to ease up and say, well, this is, this is, a, these are like sort of choices we've made or we've, uh, that have, you know, we've, uh, we've, you know, grown up in, but are they, do they need to be like this? I was do awoken. I need to sleep this way. Yeah. I slept late or early for me it was like 1145 PM last night, woken around mm-hmm. 5 AM by shoulder pain and then just thought about work. I was like, oh, I'll fall you back asleep. You know why? Asleep. Can why? I tell you why? Because yeah. there's the word should in shoulder. Oh. Whoa. Oh my God! I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> I've been holding on to that. That was from a like a put you to sleep podcast that Andrew used to listen to. Andrew, my husband, on tour when he couldn't sleep, it was like a yog- a yogini who was like, "There's the word should and shoulder." Wait, so what I, does I, that I, I've mean? Been holding on to that. I should be sleeping. Just like your shoulders are your shoulders are up. You're you're like feeling anxious. You know all the things that you should be doing, and then ah. you know, whatever. Okay, so it's stress. Too much underlining. It's stress. It's very confusing it to me, guys. Stress. I didn't. This is becoming a sleep podcast, but I didn't mean to. I just think oh, it's becoming I, a wellness podcast. I think <laughs> honestly, I think music and art and culture is a wellness exercise. It's a, it is about wellness. I don't mean to sound like a uh, lunatic. It's just it's wellness <laughs> with no trademark, you know. Well, I assume for you, expressing yourselves is a form of something. It, is, it does you oh, yeah. good, doesn't it? I just know how bad it feels when I don't. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, there are some... Uh, uh, sorry, Ephraim, an opportunity to speak on anything we've just been babbling about. Anything? Any got anything? I think I, I have I have different type of insomnia than you guys. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm more the night terror kind of insomnia where I wake up incredibly anxious and then I have to wake all the way up to sort of calm down again. You know, I have to get out of that half sleep state. Oh no! Um, I'm sorry to yeah. hear that. Oh no, it's okay. It's not that heavy, brother. <laughs> sorry, that you got so. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. No, it's just a different type of insomnia. Well, it you is know? That, that if you're and, having sleep terror, that, that's I, I a think, heavy thing. I mean, between night terror and just like I can't sleep, night terror is night terror is intense. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It took me. I don't know. It's at least now I, I understand. I guess you what can get is. used to everything. Yeah. I didn't mean I'm to. I'm sort of used to it. Yeah, I didn't mean to dad you. But if my son or my daughter told me they had night terrors, I'd be concerned. And I have a similar affinity. Well, not a similar, a higher affinity for my children than I do for you, Ephraim. But I, I like you very much. I don't want you to suffer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but also I'm not a child. You know, I'm like no. when your kids are uh, older and they tell you they have night terrors, I'm sure you'll still be like, oh, shit, that sucks. But you won't. it won't uh, hurt yeah. your heart as much, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Well, you know? I want to get into the sound as well. I appreciate some uh, conversation about the whatever I brought up today, and I appreciate that. But uh, uh, you've got uh, collaborators here, which I don't believe you had on the first record, as far as I can recall. And uh, and also, Ephraim, I think the last time we spoke about the actual music making, it was a bit of an experiment for you in terms of synthesized uh, sounds. Like You were exploring it, I suppose I should say, in a way that maybe you hadn't. I'm always careful. I don't want to misspeak or generalize. Um can you talk about the evolution of this band sound from your perspective, Ephraim, and some of the people you chose to bring, to bring in to help? Well, I, again, not super interesting answer, but after we made the cassette and when we were talking about making this record, we both agreed that it could use uh, – that if we we're going to write new stuff, that it should probably have rhythm, you know, um, mm-hmm. just because the previous stuff didn't really, you know, and then it became a matter of, you know, who can provide that. And uh, Ariel suggested Liam, and that was a great suggestion. Um, yeah, and then um, in the middle of all that, uh, again, super boring. When you have like a bunch of synth <laughs> stuff to try to make a melody poke through, it's hard to do it with another synthesizer sometimes because you end up with this sort of you could do sort of a corny lead synth patch that'll cut through everything, but that's not the prettiest sound in the world. So yeah, when it got to the point of adding more instrumental counter melody, a, a fiddle seemed to make sense. So we, we asked Jessica. Okay. So it, now, sorry, I feel like when we spoke last, it was just ahead of one of your earliest 
or second, third performance at Pop Montreal, as I recall. Um, and you were staging the band for, am I right? Was that one of the first shows, Ariel? Or? Yeah, we are, we've done two so far. In your whole lifetime. Oh, okay. I didn't. As, as all hands? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Make light? Yeah, yeah. Just two. Uh, and one uh, was the one we were, I'm referencing the second one? Yeah, with, uh, with Jace and with Erica Angel. Jace Lasek and Erica Angel. Ah, so. Erica Angel sang and Jace played, uh, synth. Okay, so it wasn't, you didn't have the rhythm section that Ephraim's describing. Not yet, no. Okay. Not yet. We have, we have yet to perform this new music. Is there a, I mean, I know you're both very busy actually with life and work. Um, is there a particular reason though that, like, is there, could you tour this at this point now, Ariel, do you think? Like, is this something you'd want to put on the road? Yeah, we will. We are going to, we, we're going to have a meeting about it next week as it happens. Do you want to have the meeting right now? We're all here. (laughs) I think, uh, we'll have to do it in a couple chunks because we both, we both have a, a lot of, we, you know, this is, this is one of other projects in our lives. Yeah. But I just been such an ease around this that it's a pleasure. And I yeah, I really I'd love to I'd love to experience what it is to play this yeah. for people. I, I can appreciate that. From your perspective, Ariel, the these uh, I appreciate Ephraim that you don't think it's particularly interesting, but um Ariel I, for me it's exciting. I, I mean it's 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 uh it does create a different sound and a more dynamic sound. So uh Again, I will quasi apologize for finding boring things interesting. Uh, Ariel, yeah. um, in terms of your own perspective on the evolution of your band, um, and these new folks and what they bring to it mm-hmm. and maybe what it, what it foretells about what you might do on the road. Um, mm-hmm. I assume this is exciting, but can you articulate the sort of distinction between what this band was when we last spoke a couple of years ago and maybe where it feels like it is now? Oh, a couple of years ago. Yeah, I I think the making a record that has a, th- a theme, you know, it's a broad, it's broad, but it's still there's a, something really unifying about it. Sort of, it helps in the storytelling. It helps in the arc of like I feel like there's a real arc to the record, and it, it it's of a piece, which is a really nice feeling. And I think that's partially to do with the fact that it was made fast, and then also having rhythm. I mean, I I just think you know. Selfishly, as a as a singer who's who's so far just singing happily, um, sometimes I actually I just want to I want to know how I'm going to move my body. Yeah. And if I'm you know in quotes dancing, then I feel like I'm contributing or doing something. Something sometimes the more the non rhythmic, uh, sort of more atmospheric pieces are I mean it's wonderful but I feel like that it needs to it's like a quilt like it needs it needs some pinning like some moments of yeah I just just, I like rhythm I mean we both do but I really I really felt like it worked well in this so uh, the other part of my question was and I I know you have meetings to have and I don't want to spill any beans but if you were to try to make it a, a touring concern or play more shows would you try to incorporate some of your guests on this record or, or incorporate rhythm in that regard, a live drum kit or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. And okay. we have to keep it yeah. tight. And, That's what... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. That's that's exciting. This is exciting stuff. I assume. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We want it. We want it. We'd like to. Per, we'd like to. We'd like the experience to resemble the record experience. Yeah. Okay. No, that's yeah. great. Um, in terms of your voice, voices, I mean, one of the things that those of us who process these records, uh, come to realize is that the voice itself, I mean, sorry, it's a trite thing to say the voice is like an instrument because that's what it is. <laughs> There's nothing yeah. else. What a vocal, yeah, yeah. that's what it's part of the deal. But when you treat it or process it or add it, mix it a certain way, it becomes more textural than some voices do. Um, Ephraim, can you talk about maybe your approach to, because I think you've, Say, you yourself have sang on records in some measure of um, clarity in terms of the way the fidelity is, and then in other times it's fucked up and processed. Um, in this band, it seems to be a, a conscious choice to create a little bit of distance between the voice and uh, the listener. Um, am I on the right track here? Does that make sense? Uh, and, and if so, can you speak to that? 
Um, hmm. No, there was no... There was no intentionality in terms of how the vocals ended up sounding yeah. on the record. If anything, there are points where it would be like, shit, I wish those were a little drier. Yeah. Um, we did, we yeah, we did our best to... It just can be tricky balancing. I mean, it's hard sometimes balancing a lead vocal with the rest of the track, you know? Yes, um, yeah. You don't want it sitting super on top of everything, and at the same time, you don't want it to be buried. It's like a super fine line, and sometimes the the middle ground on that is like isn't optimal. But at the same time, there are tons of records that I listen to and I love where the vocals are sort of in that in between in between place. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. If the words are good, I generally think that the words should be heard, you know? Sure. So then a drier approach makes sense. But then it also gets confusing, especially with the electronic stuff and synth stuff. Like, if it's a... Let's say you have a, just a straight-up rock trio, like bass, guitar, drums, and the bass player sings, right? Writing a plain old song. Mixing that super easy because the relative volume of everything is already kind of dialed in. You know what I mean? Like the drums, yeah. if they're wailing, then yes, unless the singer's screaming, the vocals are going to be buried, you know? Yeah. And so you just try, you just kind of respect the relative volume of everything. With the synth and the electronic stuff, there is no relative volume. Right. You know what I mean? It's not like yeah. it can be super loud, it can be super quiet. They're just sounds, you know? Yeah. They're not, um, yeah. So it can get confusing I don't know. It's something I'm still figuring out, you know, like there's, there's definitely, yeah, I'm, I don't know. This, still figuring it a, out, but I, honest, I think I prompted this exact line of questioning the last time. And I, uh, I feel like you said something similar. So I apologize. Uh, cause it's sounding familiar to me. You're both, con you're both consistent. Then. We are consistent people. Yes. But I also, I think it's for me, it's the inter because this record has intermingling voices. And like I say, I'm just yeah. so happy to hear Ephraim's voice again. And I hear the passion of it. And I hear the passion in your singing too, uh, Ariel. And I, I think I, coming from post hardcore where I would be, my friends and I would be writing, thinking about what we were writing, but then just sort of bellowing it. This is, I'm getting deja vu. I think we actually talked about this last time and I don't want to dwell on it again, but I'm just saying it is really fascinating because your voices are very affecting. I, I'm moved by them and the singing. It's just interesting when they, they are just like a layer. Uh, and that makes me listen to them more intently, if that makes any sense. Does that make any sense? <laughs> like I'm trying to. I yeah. find that they're so different from track, like from song to song. I don't, I feel. Yes. Like that's a fair, that's a fair way of putting it as well. Yeah. There's a dynamic. Sometimes they're really clear in a kind of folky, yeah. you know, high fidelity way. And sometimes they're more textural but you're absolutely right and I, I i don't mean to generalize either um but i'm going to take us down a little bit of that road because ephraim earlier ariel was talking about some of the thematics on this record and we've hinted about some of mm -hmm. them i don't necessarily think that a band name uh can prove to be an umbrella concept about what a band might be trying to convey but because it's a young band I kind of feel like that, like that there's something about the name, the mm -hmm. moniker, if you will, that this record is an extension of that even, that exploration mm -hmm. of what it means, light and darkness and these sorts of things. Um, again, I don't mean to be too pedantic or get into semantics or say other words that rhyme with antic, but do you <laughs> feel like it's a bit of an extension? Like this, this concept that you've come up with as a band name, it feels like you're exploring it a lot. In the lyrics here, it's in also particular. it's also a truncated "all hands make light work." Oh right, of course, it's missing a word. Well, it's it's a nod to that. I don't think that it's it's not a definitive. You know, it's polyvalent, and it's ah, you okay. can you can you can interpret it how you want, but that's part of it. It's well, about certainly we've talked about stress collaborative collaboration and and yeah, helping each other. I see. Ephraim, because uh, work and labor and capitalism are all swimming around uh, on this record beyond all the other stuff we've talked about. So I think I know the answer to this. But Ephraim, do you feel like there's a aesthetic connection between what you've called the band and how you're the songs you're trying to make together? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think so. I like, uh, yeah, I like when we came up with the band name, I liked it 
because it sounded like a statement of intent, like just in a literal sense, like all hands make light, leave the work thing out of it, you know, just like literally make light with, with your hands, you yeah. know? Yeah. And then that sometimes happens. You have a band name and then it becomes a statement of intent and it's sort of not in a conscious way, but it sort of informs the kind of work that you end up doing, you know? Um, and I definitely think that's true in this case, you know? Yeah, like one of the recurring things that I wondered about was this notion. Uh, there's a song called The Worker's Graveyard, and in parentheses, Poor Eternal. And then there's a song called The Sons and Daughters of Poor Eternal. And Ephraim, I think both of those lyrics are ascribed to you. What does that ex uh, term, Poor Eternal, mean to you in terms of uh, these songs and maybe this this record? I I mean, it's different things on both those songs. The The... You know, that first song, A Worker's Graveyard, is about, yeah, like, uh, all us, uh, descendants of, uh, settler colonialists on this stolen land, you know, who are also kind of abandoned here, you know, as, uh, as working people. And that continues through the successive waves of immigration that this country has, uh, profited from, you know. Yeah, so that's songs like, that's what poor eternal means hmm. and that sort of like the glo the global we uh like the, the the most of us in this world you know what i mean who are yeah. barely getting by and then the sons and daughters of poor eternal is a more literal thing that started with in the neighborhood i live in there's um at a certain hour of the dawn there there begins to be a procession of uh People uh, sort of coming into the neighborhood to find somewhere to get a fix or, you know, it's like a, it's a weird pre-commute commute of uh, street addicts, you know? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so at some point it was a really, it was actually a really practical thing. I was, you know, we, was, me and my wife were talking about it and there's like, there's no, like street addicts is a terrible term, you know, like all the terms are fucking terrible because they're used in violent ways, you know, yeah, like, yeah. and, and, uh, you know, they, they all speak to, you know, basic neglect of care, you know, and dehumanization. So it's like, so it's just in our household, like what, what, when talking about a thing, is there anything we can, we, we, what terms can we use to refer to, to, uh, unhoused addicted population and so that was one of the ones we came up with you know and it's sort of we don't actually use it because that would make us like something out of a fucking wes anderson film or something you know but uh <laughs> but i like the i like the phrase you know um mm. and so yeah and that song references that a little although it's not explicitly about that you know did you conjure this phrase poor eternal i'm sorry if you spoke to that is that it was yeah it was with a back and forth between me and my wife this idea. it started it, no it actually started out with just like the sons and daughters you know that was it it started with that it was mm -hmm. like sons and daughters you know it's like the sons and daughters are on their way home or the sons and daughters are trying to find somewhere to go you know it, it started like that right. just observing this yeah again this sort of pre-dawn commute that mm -hmm. ha happens on our street you know and then yeah everyone is someone's child yeah yeah exactly yeah yeah, everyone is someone's child. I think that that's like, yeah. It's important to you know there's a hardening that happens yeah. that can happen, and just to to keep that close, you know, when you interact with people and when you encounter people. Yeah, of course. I, I, I'm always moved by the levels of empathy that both of you put forth in your work, and particularly in this project. I think you're trying to make sense of the world and your place in it, but also looking around to see how other people are doing, and that's not always the case in, in music. So mm -hmm. I just want to say, I, I appreciate that. Um, and I hope it gives you some, I don't know, even know what this, like I say, I think there's hope here somehow. I think mm -hmm. addressing these things mm -hmm. is a hopeful, Absolutely. hopeful thing, but it is hard. These are, these are hard subjects, I suppose, is where I'm also coming from. Uh, and it, as I dig into them, I'm like, man, like it gets me thinking about things, but I also, sorry, I can't also help but feel despair. Does that make I don't know. It's a mix of that for me. For sure. But I mean, like, I got to say, I don't think the record itself is, you know, heavy or, uh, you know, like, I don't know. It, to, to acknowledge, like, I don't know. 
Like, this is the world we live in, you know? Like, if you tell stories about the world we live in without acknowledging the world we live in, then the stories you're telling are fairy tales, you know? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. and there's a difference between, like... You know, it's, yeah, I don't know. It just seems, that seems basic to me. No, it know? does. I, when I think of a song like yours, uh, Anchor, Ariel, uh, my anchor was lifted. I was cast out to sea, saw ocean, more ocean, no land beneath me. I'm alive in the hearse of the tide, the restless element. Sorry, I'm reciting the whole thing. Is that okay? <laughs> I like it. I like it. It's like, a... <laughs> but this, this is, I, I saw something actually quite fascinating in the biographical information. You had a really, Sorry, you had a quote about sea shanties. Oh, here it is. Music inspired by ancestor music. Sea shanties for seas we've never sailed. That's hopeful in itself. That 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 suggests there's a future. That suggests mm -hmm. that there's more to life than the precedents and the past on some levels. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But that yeah. was my reading of it, and that's what I hear a lot in these songs. Uh, yeah, I think I think I think that part. I think uh, part of that is also about tapping into traditions that we can't necessarily name but are part of our epigenetics or like yeah. we were interested in it's got a folkloric feel for lack of a better word and I but it's not a specific folklore or, and yeah there's there's like like there's some feeling of an ancientness um, of no fixed geography yeah yeah I guess these are these are yeah yeah and without refer I mean, because folkloric stuff is, I mean, it's beautiful, but it's, it's also super dangerous, you know, <laughs> like it's, it's right, it butts right up next to nationalism a lot of the time, you know, but it's still, I mean, traditions are beautiful, you know, so it's like the, the you know, mm -hmm. there's no, you know, it's like trying to use, yeah, those techniques to sort of just, to reference what we're living through now yeah, you know, I mean, without with or like, without yeah without actually using the previous signifiers you know or the previous you know what i mean yeah but it, it there's there's things like like you know uh, repetition and and singing in a mode and you know a certain kind of like storytelling you know these are these are like those sort of like light theme you know sort of I don't know, like little details that lend the quality. I think for someone to reference an anchor at this point is an interesting... For centuries, we have encountered traditionalists who are also ahistorical mm -hmm. and into cultural erasure. So it's just mm -hmm. an interest, And I feel like I say for centuries because this is the way it's always been, but this feels particularly heightened if you follow news media now. Mm -hmm where you get this, we keep trying to call people out for being hypocrites when they don't give a fuck. Yeah. They don't care yeah. that they're hypocrites. They're fine right. with that. Yeah. So all I'm mm -hmm. getting at, when I hear a song like this or think about what you're talking about and what it means to, because we do anchor ourselves to traditions for some level of stability and to, to curb that anxiousness. Okay. Like as uh, the thing we've just gone through, there was a precedent that people cited from 1918 and most of us like, okay, I wasn't around then. I don't. That doesn't even really help me. Yeah, everything was different back then. So what are we doing with this? And then the other side of that is people taking away everyone's civil rights because someone in fucking two hundred years ago said or 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 supporting certain rights that don't make sense now. Anyway, now I'm on a tangent. I don't want to go. I wanted to wrap this up, <laughs> and I'm ranting. But I do think that we're when you ponder the past and the lost lives that you ponder and what it means to look forward. It's a resonant feeling that I get from this. Like, I feel that. This weird temporal mm. fucking thing we're in where no one quite knows how to live. And do we look to mm. the past? Are we looking at it too hard? How do we move forward? Anyway, sorry, I'm babbling here. But I, I just want to say, on a visceral level, I pick these things up from your band and from this record in particular. The Dawn. The Dawn is is is, is a new thing, right? <laughs> and I, I, I... And yeah, and it's like a turn... I mean, again... Citing the dawn as a new day is also like super, it's a super dangerous idea. It's been used, you know, yeah. like it's that kind of rhetoric has been used to justify woof, like a lot of very heinous shit, you know, but then it's like, that's yeah. why it's important to reclaim, you know, those are basic human ideas, you know, like this, it's like yeah. these, yeah, I don't know. They become, they, they become, um, What's the word? Not parable, but 
Yeah, I don't know. It's important to reclaim. Sometimes I think it's important to reclaim some pretty simple words, you know, it, um, just because yeah. they're mm -hmm. so yeah. often abused by the other side, you know, and language yeah. is yeah. super important. You know, we can't let them have all the good words, you know. No, <laughs> no. Well, I think like roses are similar too. You know? yeah. yeah, it's like an overwrought symbol, and then how can you? But yet, you know, it's beauty is inherent. So how do you? I I couldn't help take it. I, I lie down in roses, dear, which is the song we were alluding to that has sort of come back. Uh, it, it's a bit meta about this conversation as I pondered the lyrics. Lie down in roses, dear. Hey, we're full circle about gardening. Yeah, but do not do not <laughs> sing about birds, yeah. which is hilarious yeah. because it speaks to a song. There's another. Anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to. <laughs> I I also want to say, as always with Ephraim's work in particular, I and and yours too, Ariel. But I always I like the little. To me, that's a little bit of a sense of humor. Well, uh, also the fact yeah, that it's like li it's lie like down, not being saccharine. Lie down in roses is is uh, like it sounds like a pretty romantic. Uh, you know, because roses are beautiful and they're associated with love and it sounds romantic. But if you lie down in roses, those bushes are full of thorns. That's not a good place yeah. to lie down, you know? So it also yeah. sounds like an insult, you know? Like, go fucking lie in roses, you know? Like, <laughs> so it's got the double, the double thing there, you know? I don't think John Bon Jovi thought too hard about that song they wrote then. I never even thought of that. That's true. I'm going to lay you down in a bed of roses. Ow! Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I appreciate uh, you two, and I appreciate this band, and I I, I, I thank you for uh, spending this much time with me and my babbling. I always appreciate it. Um, uh, you've hinted and alluded to future plans, potentially touring and whatnot. Uh, I'll go to Ariel on this. Uh, I don't know if you can reveal too much at this point, um, or if you know details at this point, if you can talk about any future plans for all hands, whether that's you've already started working on songs, uh, if you've got your own stuff going on, now's the time. Do you have anything you want to share about plans for yourself or this band? Oh, uh, well, we're, we're going to play some shows. That's definitely going to happen. We just have to decide when and where, but that's imminent. And then, yeah, I have my own record coming out in the fall, a solo oh, record. Oh, awesome. And that's yeah, it's a lot of it's a lot. Of, even though it's done, it's a lot of work. You say solo. I assume there were collaborators, yeah. or no? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, but it's but I claim it as mine. No, no. I, of course, I thank them. And <laughs> okay. But yes, no, no. It's not. A, it's not. A, it's not a collaboration in the sense of all hands make clay. Okay. Okay. So you're it's not, it's not democratic. When will we hear more about that though? I'm curious. I as you know, I'm a fan. Oh, um we're announcing we're announcing the record on the 31st. Oh, great. Okay, cool. So we'll learn we'll keep our eyes up for that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh uh that's exciting. Yeah. Uh Ephraim, similar question. Anything coming up that we need to know about in terms of this band or other things you're working on? No, I I think uh, I'm hoping, like Godspeed's got a little bit of stuff in the fall, but I'm hoping that the next few months with the All Hands Make Light stuff and Godspeed and whatever, I'm looking forward to some months where it's just about making things as opposed to being on the road or, you ah, know, okay. yeah. that kind of stuff. So I think it's uh, that's a type of gardening, right? Yeah, actually, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that is absolutely is. Have you, planting seeds. in terms of um, writing... Have you begun work on more all hands uh, pieces at this point, or no? No, but we we will, right, Ariel? I mean, I think that's the plan. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I mean, I, so far, maybe because you do a lot of work, Ephraim. It's been really fast <laughs> when we do work. <laughs> nice. That's great to hear. Uh, I yeah. assume people can learn more about uh, this band and this record at uh, CST Wikipedia. Records. Sure, there's the Wikipedia. Yeah, you can go there if you like, and you can change <laughs> things yourself. You can make up your own facts. Uh, CSTRecords.com, I think, is the most factual place to go, and there's lovely uh, ways to order the record on different formats and a great... Uh, I love that I love that label's website. I'll go on the record and say that is the best label website. Everything you need right there, all the details. That's your goddamn true Wikipedia right there, CSTRecords.com. <laughs> you need any uh, information. So there, uh, in terms of your own things... I think we've covered this before, but uh, Ariel, in this yes. crumbling social media landscape, are there places oh. you want people or websites you want people to go to? Anything like that to follow you and whatnot? 
Oh, we have an all hands make light Instagram, but it's oh, yeah, not regular. Yeah. It's not regularly fed, but I think anything really pertinent, you know, any really important information, like if we tour, we'll okay. I'll, I'll make sure that that goes up there. Okay, cool. Uh, and personally, do you want people to uh, keep tabs on you for your record and stuff? Oh, they can. I don't. Need, that's just they're just separate. We're adults. Why are we talking about this? I'm sorry. I, yeah, I just I like to give places. people the opportunity to they're share. That's so nice. I really I, like I, it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no, you're, you're I welcome. I think yeah. that people who, yeah, but they they'll find me. Oh, they'll find you. Okay, and I'll yeah. link to things as well. Thank Ephraim, you. I just want to continue the awkwardness. Do you want people to <laughs> keep tabs on you with anything, so to speak? No, I'm I'm good. You're I'm good. good. Yeah. 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 Okay. Good. Yeah. So, so that's the that's yeah. the right answer. Maybe I got to stop asking this question. Appreciate that you appreciate it, Ariel. But I'm also like, what are we doing at this point? Anyway, sorry about that. If we can go out on a song uh, from this new record, I wonder uh, if you can pick one because I'd like to let people hear something from Darling the Dawn if we can. Uh, oh, we got two people here. I'm gonna go to Ariel to choose initially, but then if Ephraim. I had uh, 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 Slurus White and Guy Picciotto on recently, and Guy came up with a whole new system because he's heard this. He's like, you ask people and then you give the, the, them a chance to veto each other. It's very negative. Yeah. I'm paraphrasing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he came up with like a yeah. whole number system, and I couldn't. It was good. But anyway, <laughs> I just want to give everyone a, a fair shot at uh, picking a thing. Now, Ariel has wandered off screen. I think uh, we're waiting. I, oh, here, uh... here we go. Uh, I sons and daughters of poor eternal is my choice. Now, why did that come to mind? Because it's it's often in my mind. It, I just I like how it makes me feel. Okay, that's a good answer. Uh, Ephraim, are you okay with that? Of course, I am. <laughs> yeah. Come okay. on, veto it. Let's have no, it. Let's I, have I, our I, first. I like though. a good veto. I kind of. I, I kind of want to. I'm telling. I'm not gonna lie. I kind of want to do the gi, uh whatever the triple seed, uh, like a buy round. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know. He had a thing where if we all put up our hands with the number of the track we want somehow. No, that's not it. We all put up our hands, and then if it was an even number, so and so picked. If it was an odd number, so and so picked. And then uh, if oh, it was yeah. a prime number, so and so picked. I'm happy just because I love gi. We can try this. We can make it a contest. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's a little. No, no, no. We're good. <laughs> okay. No, From... we live on. A... I'm. I don't know. I don't now. I don't know. See, don't. I don't like. I don't like too many. Uh... I'm getting anxious. No, don't. I mean, a... Why would we live? We live on a fucking planet, then. Well, okay. You want to change your vote? You vetoed yourself. No, That's I don't know. I don't want. I don't want to choose. <laughs> I'm vetoing myself. Auto veto. <laughs> Auto veto. I will tell you what. Now that we've got two things, I'll play a little bit of one at the beginning. And then a different one. You know what? Let's pick it. I just like cursing. This is We Live on a Fucking Planet and Baby That's the Sun, which, as you heard, has a really interesting origin story as a title, among other things. So let's play that uh, by All Hands Make Light from uh, Darling the Dawn. Uh, Ariel and Ephraim, I, I hope you enjoyed at least some semblance of this and uh, <laughs> some aspect of it, I should say. Uh, thank you for this time. I, I I love you both very much, and I, I love your band. So thank you, and uh, I hope we speak again. Best of luck in the future. Thank you, Vish. Thank you, Vish. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
That was a wide-ranging chat, I thought, there with uh, Ephraim and Ariel. Got into lots of different things. I hope you enjoyed that. Sorry for going on about the birds in the morning. I verified that uh, the story I told is true. Uh, at least it's true as uh, part of that uh, book I was talking about, Radical Remission. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that conversation uh, with all hands make light on this, the 781st episode of Creative Control, which is part of the Entertainment One Podcast Network and is available wherever you get your podcasts pretty much. If you can't find an episode that you're looking for or if you want to learn more about me and sign up for my monthly newsletter, please visit vishkana.com. You can also like Creative Control on Facebook at the moment. You can also follow the show on Twitter at the moment, at Vish Creative, or you can follow me directly on Twitter and on Instagram, at Vish Kana at the moment. Visit uh, patreon.com slash creative control if you can, please, to make a flexible monthly donation to support the work of this donor-driven podcast. $6 American or more grants you access to exclusive content. You get episodes earlier than everybody else gets them. Uh, Sometimes I put up bonus content with my current guests or I dig into my archives to find older interviews I think you might find interesting from my history. And uh, yeah, it's it's, it's a thing. It's really just to offer you something in return for your generous financial support of this show. Also, if you're interested in receiving a Creative Control t-shirt, I still have some left the size uh, size variety is starting to dwindle finally um but if you're interested just message me on patreon and i'll get you one while supplies last there's the uh, kind of maroon one with my giant head on it and then there's a, a yellow one with like a pizza shapes to form the uh, name of the show so thanks again patreon.com slash creative control uh, speaking of thanks thanks again to the wonderful alberta record retailer blackbird music which you can learn more about and order things right from their website there, blackbird.ca. also want to thank Pizza Trocadero, The Bookshelf, and Planet Bean Coffee, three wonderful independent businesses in Guelph, Ontario, and Granddad's Donuts, another wonderful independent business, which I think they just did some sort of renovation there at their location in Hamilton, Ontario. You should go check them out if you're in those areas. Uh, they offer in-kind support for this show, and I'm very grateful. Thanks, as always, to my friend Jim Guthrie for letting me use some music of his on this show. You can learn more about Jim at jimguthrie.org. And finally, thank you for listening to this episode with All Hands Make Light. I hope you'll check out their new album and uh, see them if they come to a city near you. And thank you for subscribing to this podcast or following it and telling your friends all about it and helping to spread the word about creative control. It means the world, so thank you. That's all I got. I will talk to you very soon. I hope you're well. Talk soon. Bye for now.